All right, welcome back, folks, to Wrestle Rant, where I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, break down all the pay-per-views that I watch on the WWE Network. Today, we're talking about the 2002 installment of WWE Vengeance, and a very good show it was. I mean, I thoroughly enjoy a lot of the shows from 2002 just because it was a great fucking year for wrestling, and I have not been shy about talking about in the past how, despite the fact that I was not watching wrestling back in 2002, it is one of my favorite years to go back and watch shows from that year, just because, I mean, the first half of the year, pay-per-view-wise, was not a amazing. No Way Out was phenomenal. Royal Rumble was pretty good. WrestleMania wasn't great on the whole, but uh, Backlash, Judgment Day, SummerSlam, don't even get me started. Survivor Series was incredible. Unforgiven was pretty good, and Vengeance was no exception. So we'll kick things off with the Elimination Tables tag team match to open the show. The Dudley Boys, Bubba Ray Dudley, and Spike Dudley, not Devon, because this was right after the draft, and they split up Devon over to SmackDown as Reverend Devon, so on and so forth, against Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit. Benoit had just come back, I believe from injury or something along those lines, but he was back back in his first pay-per-view match on this show. Really fun match. I mean, really nothing of note. I mean, in the fact that there was nothing on the line. But as a match itself, it was really, really fun. Spike Dudley took out, uh, I believe, Eddie Guerrero on the ringside with the the Dudley dog through a table at ringside. That was a great fucking spot. Benoit went ballistic, takes Spike in the ring, tosses him over the top rope through a table at ringside. Spike could never catch a break when it came to that kind of stuff. That was a great spot, too. Bubba Ray and uh, Benoit going at it. Benoit trying to do a release German suplex to Bubba through the table behind him. Bubba reversed into a Bubba Bomb through the table to score the victory. So, I don't know if I agreed with the victors here, just because uh, obviously Benoit and Eddie are much bigger single stars, and I don't know what they were really trying to build with uh, with those two as a tag team. But they were a great tag team, though. They had a really fun match with the Dudleys. They questioned the ending outcome, but other than that, the match itself was really, really fun. After that, for the Cruiserweight uh, Championship, Jamie Noble defending against Billy Kidman. And a fun match. These two, I did not know, had a series of matches for that championship over the course of 2002. Of course, I remember their match from Survivor Series that November. This match was equally fun. In the end, Jamie Noble successful in defending the Cruiserweight Championship. Pretty typical, standard Cruiserweight matchup in that it was really, really good. Um, Jeff Hardy defending the European Championship up next against William Regal. Not really, I mean, it wasn't a bad match, it's just that it wasn't what it could have been, not that it was going to be a five-star amazing instant classic anyway, um, not that, like, they're going to go in there and have a, you know, a, just a wrestling clinic or anything, but the match itself only went four minutes, it was fine for what it was, could have been more with more time, but for what it was, it was passable, Jeff Hardy still the European champion, um, after that, John Cena taking on Chris Jericho in his pay-per-view debut, um, of course, John Cena debuted at the end of June against Kurt Angle, and he triggered a feed to Chris Jericho right after that, and Jericho was the perfect person to, uh, debut against, and they talked about, you know, um, in my Vengeance 2001 review uh, last time on Saturday, that uh, Jericho was not utilized properly going into 2002 as undisputed champion. And of course, he was the undisputed champion, but he was booked like shit. So once he dropped that title, he was basically out of the title picture, and he was losing to John Cena on pay-per-view, the rookie. So I don't know if that says more about John Cena's upstart in the company, his rise to superstardom, or Chris Jericho's fall from grace. Quick fall from grace, should I mention, pretty abrupt at that, but um, it was a good match, John Cena won it about six minutes, I believe, with maybe not a roll-up, I think he did win it with a roll-up, I'm not exactly sure, but John Cena did score the victory, a nice defining victory for him in his first ever, in his premier pay-per-view matchup in WWE, on good stuff there, Rob Van Dam up next, defending the Intercontinental Championship against Brock Lesnar, these two faced off in the finals of the 2002 King of the Ring tournament, which ended with Brock Lesnar reigning supreme as the 2002 King of the Ring, having a rematch of the following pay-per-view, this time with the IC Championship on the line, really, really fun match, I thought it went a lot longer than it did, it says here it only went 10 minutes, Um, but it was a fun match, I didn't really love the finish, obviously they weren't going to have Lesnar win here and win the championship, they weren't going to have RVD uh, beat Lesnar either en route, you know, you know, in his journey to become the WWE champion at SummerSlam, but um, I just thought the fact that RVD hits the five-star frog splash, one, two, Heyman pulls out the referee, the referee calls for the bell, Brock Lesnar beats the shit out of RVD afterwards anyway, so it was a win-win, I just thought the finish was a little bit weak just because I mean, you would never see that today with Brock Lesnar. I know he was still on the rise. He was still on the uh, still on the ascent in WWE at this point. But to have... Essentially, it was sending the message that he would have been beaten had Heyman not interfered. And it was good heat for Brock Lesnar. It was good heat for Paul Heyman. But you should try to be sending... I mean, this was the same guy who beat The Rock clean at SummerSlam. So how does he come close to losing RVD in July, yet beats The Rock clean at SummerSlam for the WWE Championship a month later? Kind of sends the wrong message, but... Finish aside, the match was really, really fun. RVD lost nothing here. 
um, including the Intercontinental Championship. After that, Booker T versus Big Show in a no DQ match. I don't know what purpose the no DQ stipulation really served, um, but it was a good little match and a great win for Booker T, winning with winning with the uh, Houston Hangover, which was like a flipping leg drop off the top rope, which he executed to perfection. He did not do it a lot in WWE, but he got it over, you know, I got him over big time. And again, I go back to Cena and Jericho. Was it more a matter of Booker T gaining something here or Big Show losing something? I mean, I think it was more, you know, Booker T gaining something because he was really, really popular in 2002 and they were trying to build him up as a threat to the, you know, uh, a top tier championship, which they would do by WrestleMania 19. But Big Show was on the descent at this point in WWE. And I don't think it was too much longer. I mean, I think he transferred over to SmackDown. I don't know what period he went over to OVW. It might have been 2001 or the second half of 2000. I can't remember exactly. Um, But he did spend some time down in developmental to kind of lose some weight and just get fucking better because he was not good at that point. And um, they just really didn't see him. He was really served no purpose, had no worth to the company on Raw at this point in time. So it was kind of a throwaway match. And thankfully, they would rejuvenate his career by bringing him over to SmackDown later on that year and the matches with Brock Lesnar and so on and so forth. Um, but anyway, after that, for the tag team titles, the Un-Americans, Lance Storm and Christian, beating Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Edge for the world tag team titles. Um, a decent match. Obviously, the match on SmackDown is remembered more just for the moment of Edge and, uh, and Hogan winning the belts on the 4th of July, and it was a cool moment. This match really wasn't anything of note. Edge did most of the in-ring work, thankfully, and the crowd still loved Hulk Hogan, still over as Rover at this point. Um, just the Un-Americans, I just didn't really think the gimmick worked. Not that it didn't work, it just didn't really click, I guess, which is kind of the same thing, but I don't know. I really wasn't a fan of the stable. I thought the match was all right. To take the titles off Hogan and Edge prematurely was a bit weird. Um, I mean, they had Hogan in the WWE title picture for a cup of coffee that spring, went into the tag team title picture, lost the belt in a matter of three weeks. Then after that, he was gone. So, I mean, it was good short-lived little reign for him as world tag team champion alongside his... You know, the, the guy who idolized him as a kid in Edge. But um, I thought the match really wasn't too, too, you know, anything too special. The main event, The Rock, Kurt Angle, and The Undertaker. A triple threat match with the WWE Championship, which is highly regarded as one of the company's greatest triple threat matches of all time. And it's hard to disagree. Watching it for the first time here, and yes, this was my first time watching this match. I have no idea why I didn't watch it sooner, but I'm glad I did. Because this match is fucking phenomenal. And as I've always said, multi-man matches, whether it be... Triple threats, fatal four ways, five packs challenges, you know, scramble matches, six pack challenges, whatever it might be. They can be either really, really fun or just a total fucking train wreck or a clusterfuck or whatever. And uh, this match was the former. This was a just a, an absolute masterpiece of a matchup with all three guys going for their finishers, kicking out, interruptions, uh, go go platas, and, you know, last rides, choke slam, tombstones, rock bottom. Rock Bottoms, plural, um, a really, really good match. Never really a dull moment for almost 20 minutes. These <clears throat> these guys went at it and had just an absolute phenomenal triple threat match. And in the end, The Rock hitting, I believe, the Rock Bottom on Kurt Angle. And Undertaker tried to break it up, and it looked like he did, but he barely missed the three count. In the end, The Rock reigning supreme as the new WWE champion, getting one last reign as WWE champion before leaving the company right after SummerSlam to go film more movies. So a nice little final run for him. The championship, they were playing a game with the hot potato with the belt at this point. It really did not mean anything. In the course of two, throughout the course of 2002, or at least until SummerSlam, it went from Chris Jericho to Triple H to Hulk Hogan to The Undertaker to The Rock to Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. So everyone pretty much got a turn with the championship at one point, at one point or another in 2002. But still, like I said, a really, really good main event. A great main event. Not even really, really good. Um, just a tremendous triple threat match and one of the best triple threat matches, like I said before, in the company's history. I thought it was just extraordinarily well done. And that was Vengeance 2002. So on the whole, I thought it was a really, really good show. Um, a lot of great matches, a lot of great in-ring action kicking off the night with that awesome tables tag team match between the Dudley Boys, Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit. Cruiserweight title match was fun while it lasted. Hardy and Regal, kind of disappointing, but not like a, a crime against nature. Cena and Jericho succeeded in what it set out to do in getting John Cena over. RVD and Brock Lesnar, really fun match. Booker T and Big Show, another fun match. The Un-Americans and Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Edge was the only match I really didn't care for, but it had a title change, so it was noteworthy. And the main event was phenomenal, so you'd be doing yourself a major disservice by not watching Vengeance 02 on the WWE Network. So two thumbs up overall 
great show. Um, with all that being said, thank you guys for watching and listening. As always, we'll be back on Saturday with my full review of Vengeance 2003 right here on WrestleRant. But in the meantime and in between time, you guys can catch me right here on YouTube by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Your support is amazingly appreciated. You can follow me on Twitter at WrestleRant. Find me on Facebook at facebook.com backslash graham.gsm.matthews. And uh, that's about it. Also, check out the website at nextairwrestling.net for full reviews of Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Main Event, Superstars, Teen Impact Wrestling, Ring of Honor, uh, Lucha Underground, and everything else in between. So until next time, guys, I'm Graham Gs and Matthews. Have a great rest of your week, and I'll catch you folks down the road.